am I in the midst? The Lord is here. His grace is in this place. Good evening, Grace Emmanuel, giving all praise and honor to my Heavenly Father, and also thanking Pastor Turner for the invitation to briefly express my faithfulness and ability to rest in the hope of the Lord and what I believe He will eventually do. Naturally, with all that's occurring around us, it's very difficult to focus on anything but what's going on and, and what we're going through. I've certainly had those times of struggle and anxiety, but rather than focusing on all the things that I want or would like to see happening within my own time frame, I'm trying hard to focus on the blessings that I already have in my life and those small things that I can do to possibly be a blessing to others. When I center myself and put it all into perspective, I see that I have my own good health. I have a loving husband and a daughter. Uh, we have no unmet needs. My immediate family and extended family and friends, they're all healthy. And hubby and I have been able to work from home for nearly a year. And I can only be thankful for that. So I pray that you, my Grace Emanuel family, will shift your focus on what you already have in your life so that you will remain strong and vibrant in the coming year. Even if we must face additional down times, I also encourage you to also seek out and surround yourself with love and things that bring joy to your life, knowing that life is still good. So let's enthusiastically move forward in this coming new year, believing that good things are in store and let's trust in him believing that good things are coming our way. And when you start to see those things happen, remember that he already told you they would. Be blessed. Hello, my Grace Emanuel family. My name is Sister Sandra Kelly, uh, giving honor to God, to Pastor Turner, and to the Grace Emanuel uh, Church leadership. Do I have a testimony? Yes, I do. As many of you know, I am a small business owner, have been a small business owner for several years. Um, our business that I run jointly with my husband, Prestige Promotions LLC, um, a lot of our clients contact us for event-related branded merchandise. Well, in March, in mid-March, the governor said, close your doors go home, stay home for the safety of us all. Well, how that affected us is all of the um, orders we had in the pipeline from our clients dried up in an instant. Instead of that phone ringing saying, we have an event coming up for a thousand people, can you help us? We need this, we need that. It went to um, can you cancel that order that we had? Uh, we don't need that. Can you put that on hold? And so we were like, oh, wow, this is not going to be good. But what we did, though, the Lord guided us to join the chamber a couple of years ago. And um, we decided we needed to get a little bit more active. So we did that. And the chamber offered a program where you can sign up to be a provider of PPE. We didn't even know what PPE was, but we signed up for it. And I'm telling you, the Lord allowed the floodgates to open. The phone started ringing, orders started coming in again. We were able to help businesses and organizations with their PPE needs. And we ended up having one of the best years that we've had in years how, is, how does a small business have the best year, one of the best years ever in the midst of co coronavirus? I'm going to tell you how through the grace of God. So take that, COVID-19. So I want to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for providing. I wish everyone a happy, happy new year. And I wish blessings on you just like the Lord has blessed us. Thank you. Good afternoon, Grace. When Pastor asked me to do a testimony, I was lying in bed thinking of what I was going to say. Should I say something about some great illness I might have had and recovered from, or share some financial hardship that I recovered from? Then it hit me like a brick to the head. One, that I woke up this morning. Two, that I sat up, stood up, looked up, threw my hands up, and praised your holy name. For everything that you have done for me 
And when you think about that, you think about, number one, I'm breathing, I have my sight, I'm being able to walk and talk. I have a beautiful, loving wife, wonderful children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. And they are all happy and well. So this is my testimony. It was not hard to write after all. Thanking Jesus for everything that covered, for everything that he's done for us, how he covers us every day and every night. For you see, Grace, I am a living testament. I love Jesus. He takes care of me every minute, every second, every hour of the day. So each and every day, I say glory to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Amen. Greetings, Grace Emanuel. My name is Fletcher Reeves. And first, I'd like to thank uh, the head of my life, who is Jesus Christ, and also thank Pastor Turner for this opportunity. And uh, originally, I, I wasn't for sure what I wanted to uh, talk about, but uh, as I reflect on 2020, I'm just thankful. I'm thankful for God's grace, His mercy, and His favor, that hedge of protection that He's had around me and my family, and uh, also thankful for my church family and uh, the pastor that we have who's been inspiring us every uh, Monday and every Friday ending our week with uh, some good some good word for us to uh, digest and uh, continue to move on so uh, my mother uh, it was towards the end of summer uh, beginning of fall her health started to deteriorate and through fervent prayer and just uh, through faith, um, he restored my mother's uh, health, and uh, I'm just thankful for that. And um, also, I just it is it, uh, uh, scripture comes to mind. Uh, it is Psalms 5:11, uh, and it says, uh, "But let those that put their trust in Thee rejoice; uh, let them ever shout with joy, because Thou defendest them." Uh, let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. And I truly uh, am joyful in the Lord. And uh, when I leave this room, I'm going to put a mask on to defend me from things that I can't see. But I know my true defender and my salvation lies within my, uh, my Lord and my Savior. So, uh, Grace Emmanuel, I, I love you. Uh, be blessed. But more importantly feel blessed uh, so uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to my Grace Emanuel family I am Aaron folks and I'm thanking God for his grace thank you Pastor Turner for giving me this opportunity special blessings to the Turner family and sister first lady sister Mia and a special blessing for Pastor Emeritus Pastor Jennings and his wife sister Jan Isaiah 12 and 2 says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. The year of 2020 will go down as one of the most challenging years in history, which is an understatement. The vast majority of us have seen a friend or loved one stricken during this pandemic, and many have succumbed from the illness. The stress of isolation has shortened tempers and expanded waistlines. <laughs> yes, mine too. But God, in the midst of chaos, God led Pastor Jennings through a transition of leadership here at Grace Emanuel that should be a model for our national government and kept Grace from being stuck in the limbo of a long and tiring pastoral search. God provided Grace Emanuel with Pastor Turner, who literally has Grace in his DNA and is injecting a new level of enthusiasm and energy to the saints here at Grace Emanuel. In a time of crippling isolation, God has grown my family with the addition of a brand new son-in-law and three teenage grandchildren. In a period of time where knowledge is discounted and ignorance exalted, God has positioned my son Anthony to begin his quest for a PhD at the age of 24. My wife, Tawana, faced personal, physical challenges, and professional treachery. God healed her and opened another door professionally before the other completely closed. 
I have been stretched by God to the point of feeling deformed, backstabbing co-workers and strained family dynamics, and loads of new responsibilities set against a backdrop of political and social unrest has left me with one simple prayer. Lead me, God, and I will follow. There is a new table that God is preparing for me and new doors that I have, be that have begun to unlock and swing open. Yes, 2020 has been a rough and tumble train wreck of a year, but God has shown me that he is still on the throne. God has provided abundance in the middle of struggle. God has proven again and again that his name is a strong tower. God still has plans for me. There is work to be done. And as my grandmother used to say, it don't take all day to get it done. I will continue to bless the Lord and rejoice as we enter into this year of our Lord 2021. Because some pastor keeps telling me the best is yet to come. Blessings, favor, grace, and peace to our pastor, Pastor Raven Turner, and to you, my beloved church family, Grace Emmanuel, and to all that might hear this. I pray that it is a blessed evening and a blessed time of observance as we move forward to our new year. Psalm 65, 11a, Thou crownest the year with thy goodness. Our God, and Savior brought us through 2020, the year of challenge, of courage, of crying and comfort amid a global pandemic with large scale death and suffering globally. What brought us through? Jesus. What will carry us through in 2021? Emmanuel, Jesus. God with us, God with us in our nature, God with us in our sorrow, God with us in our life work, God with us through our punishment, God with us in our grave, and now with us, or rather, we with him in resurrection power, ascension, triumph, and second advent splendor. It is imperative that I press upon you as we move forward into 2021 that every day with Jesus is sweeter and grander than the day before. Please remember that God is with you and promised never to leave nor forsake you. My prayer for you and my petition to God on your behalf is that God will prosper you and bless you and cause you to be in good health even as your soul doth prosper. The love of God and the peace of God, the power of God and the joy of our Lord be with you as we go forward with thanksgiving leaving 2020 and rejoicing in entering 2021 Jan and I love you all bless you Good evening, my brothers and my sisters. I want to welcome each and every one of you to the Cyber Sanctuary tonight as we thank God for his manifold blessings in 2020. Here we are, the last night of 2020, and we can all testify I'm still here. There were some good days. There were some bad days. There were times of joy. There were times of sorrow. But through it all, the Lord has kept us. And on tonight, our testimony is this. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it wherever you are. If you're grateful tonight for the Lord keeping you, come on and put your hands together, open up your mouth, and let's give God the glory on tonight.
Amen. Wherever you are, I want you to stand with me out of respect for the reading of the Word of God. And we're going to read these verses from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, uh, beginning with verse number 1. And after we conclude, we are going to turn it over to this praise team who will usher us into the presence of our God. Amen. I'm going to be reading Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and I am going to read all the way through verse number 8. Verse number 8, to everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. And as we close out this, this scripture reading, I want to submit to you that whatever time it is in your life, he is worthy to be praised right there. Join me now with every head bowed, every eye closed as we go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come and we thank you right now for you have been so good to us. You allowed us to, to see this another day. We have made it to the last day of this year. And God, we know that the only reason we are here is because of your grace and your mercy. We just want to pause right now to say thank you. God, we pray that you will open up the windows of heaven, rain down your choice blessings upon us, move us from where we are to where you have called us to be. And God, we'll be careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. It is in the matchless, the majestic, and the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Every heart set together. Amen. 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 Come and put your hands together as the choir comes to lead us into the presence of God. Father, all glorious, 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 Father, all
Amen. Let the people of God say amen. amen. Certainly we thank God for the praise team ushering us into the presence of our God on tonight. I want to draw your attention to a very familiar passage of scripture found in the gospel according to Luke, the 13th chapter, beginning our reading with verse number 6. Again, the gospel according to Luke, the 13th chapter, beginning our reading with verse number 6. Out of respect for the reading of God's word, would you please stand on your feet as I read it in your hearing. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it, and if it bear fruit well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. God's word is already blessed, but before you take your seat, just look over at your neighbor, uh, look over at someone and say, tonight, tonight we're, preaching we're preaching about to be, to be or not to be. You may be seated in the presence of our God. To be or not to be. I don't know how you feel about it, but I love to go places where I can barter. I, I like to consider myself a good negotiator. I, I, I find that bartering allows me to get a better deal than the one that was presently being offered. And my question for you tonight, as we are on the precipice of a brand new year, is have you given God a reason to spare you another year? If, if, in fact, it was possible to barter with God for another year, what would you tell him? What would you offer him? What would you do in order to convince him to let you live one more year? Somebody type that in right there, one more year, one more year. What, what would be your points to ponder as it relates to renegotiating your spiritual contract for one more year of life? Brothers and sisters, the fact that you and I are still here means that God is still working on you and working in you and his greatest desire is to work through you. Oh God, but before you get too comfortable with our issues and inadequacies, too snug in our imperfections and too complacent in our dealings, we need to remember that God doesn't pass out another year because he has to. God is inspecting us on tonight. Somebody ought to help me right there. He's inspecting us on tonight. In a real sense, there ought to be a difference in how you are now than how you were then. I don't know how you feel about it, but I refuse to go through 2021 the same way I came out of 2020 because things that used to wreck your nerves then ought not wreck your nerves now. Things that used to easily beset you then ought not be the same things that easily beset you now. Things that used to make you mumble, grumble, and complain then ought not make you mumble and grumble and complain now. Things that frustrated you then ought not frustrate you so much now. All I'm saying is there ought to be, there needs to be, there should be some growth in you between now and then. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, before you go into 2021, you ought to look at all your haters. You ought to look at everybody who told you you would not amount to anything. You ought to look them in the face when they try to remind you of who you used to be. And you ought to look them in the eye and say, that was then, but this is now. Go on and type that in. That was then, but this is now. <clears throat> This text is proof possible is proof positive that God is concerned about growth and gain. If y'all don't mind tonight, I'm going to take my time. Let me identify the players in the passage. In the text, God is the owner. In the text, we are the fig trees. And in the text, Jesus is the vine dresser. As I look at the text, I see that the owner, which is God, watch this. Here's point number one. He made a reasonable request. I can sum this point up very quickly right now uh, by telling you that God is inspecting us tonight because he's expecting to find some fruit hanging on your tree. 
But I submit to you, Brother Marvin, that there are many, there are too many of us who went through 2020 with dreams unfulfilled, no fruit. Goals unachieved, no fruit. Talk to me if you can. Sinners unreached, no fruit. Songs unsung, no fruit. Achievements unaccomplished, no fruit. Watch me now. God is expecting to find some figs on a fig tree because figs are proof of your potential. Let me put it where you can reach it. God knows what you have the ability to do. God knows what you have the tenacity to do. God knows what you have the potential to produce. Go on and look over at your neighbor and tell them God expects fruit and no substitutes. Because figs are proof of your potential. Figs are fruits of righteousness. Figs are your works of faith. Figs are your giving in love. Figs are your commitment to Christian service. God, watch this, is not looking for a shout from you. He's looking for some figs. Figs of willingness. Figs of contentment and commitment. Ask your neighbor, are there any figs on your tree? Here's the sad part tonight because the Bible says that when God checked out the tree, there was no fruit. God expects to find some fruit hanging on your tree. Can I ask you a personal question tonight? What is God seeing when he looks at you? What, what does God see? Watch this. When you lift up your service in 2020 to him, what does God observe about your obedience to his word? Did you not know that God is monitoring your ministry? When God is looking, he's searching for something. And when you look at the text in a very real sense, Sister Corinne, this tree failed inspection. I'm in Flint, so when you know that when a vehicle does not pass inspection, it's not permitted on the road. Did you fail inspection because you are failing in your faith? Did you fail inspection because you are falling in your walk with God? Did you fail inspection tonight because you failed to follow orders? God said this tree has failed its inspection. What's the point, preacher? Here's the point, Sister Tara. God has his eyes on you. I need y'all in the back of me to help me preach that. Look over at somebody and tell them God has his eyes on you. God has been examining every one of us all year long. Let, let me turnerize the text. The Bible says in the Turner translation, now look, I've been coming here looking to find some fruit I don't see. I stared at it and found nothing. I surveyed the land and saw nothing. I peeled back your cute little leaves and still found nothing. Look at the text, Kiara. It's an intimidating look. It's an, it's an intimate look. The first look was friendly and devoted, but private and personal. The last look was a look of judgment. The last look was a decisive look. The last look caused God to move from caring to cutting, from seeking to sawing from being affectionate to deciding to amputate and we ought to stop for a praise break right there because on December 31st 2020 God has chosen not to cut us down I don't know how y'all feel about it but I know I haven't done everything right I haven't followed all the rules I've made some mistakes but aren't you glad tonight that you're here and he's giving you another chance I double dare you open up your mouth and give him glory tonight tonight he's looking for some fruit now y'all gonna get mad at me right here but it's on purpose not just the tree of your church but your tree not just the tree of your pastor your tree not just the tree of your coordinator or ministry leader but your tree a believer with no fruit is like a car factory running out of steel Talk to me if you can. A believer with no fruit is like a road crew running out of asphalt. A believer with no fruit 
is like the Jackson 5 without Michael. It just doesn't look right. Somebody shout, it just don't look right. If you a believer tonight, you ought to have some fruit on your tree. God is actively engaged and involved in the scripture because there are some things in the church even in the midst of a pandemic that just don't look right and just because you belong to a growing church doesn't mean you're growing just because you belong to a serving church doesn't mean you're serving just because you belong to a praying church doesn't mean you have a prayer life being a member of Grace Emmanuel doesn't automatically make you a fruitful tree. No more than sitting in a garage makes you a Maserati. You got to have some fruit on your own tree. It's not my job to grow you. It's not my job to mature you. It's not my job to shout you. But when you have a relationship with God, when you wake up in the morning and your feet hit the floor, you think about how good God has been and you will open up your mouth and give him glory. Sona comes and he has a reasonable request uh, Deacon Penix but when he looked at what was happening behind them leaves here's a second point he had to give a redundant report brother Aaron this tree even though it looked good had no fruit and here it is in a nutshell for you tonight whether you like it or not there's no excuse for you not bearing fruit. I'm going to look over at somebody and tell them, put your seatbelt on because it's about to get tight. There, there, there's no excuse for you not bearing fruit. And if you walk with God long enough, you will discover that there's a specific time when God will lay down some specific terms. Walk with me in the text because the Bible says the owner kept coming to find fruit, looking for the fruit of faithfulness, fruit of family togetherness, fruit of fellowship, fruit of fasting and praying. And the text indicates that this tree was fruitless. Watch this for three years. This tree was fruitless for the same amount of time Jesus had a public ministry. Y'all not going to help me, are you? Somebody shout three years, three years. That's a grand total, Sheila, of 36 months. If my math is right, that's 156 weeks. 1,095 days, 26,280 hours, 473,040 minutes, and the results were the same. The owner found nothing. Now, I know I'm going to hurt your feelings, but it's on purpose because I love you. Some of us promised the Lord last year that we were going to do better. We were going to be better and give better. You told the Lord last year, 2020 come, I'm going to church regular. The pandemic hit, you couldn't come to the building, and now you won't even log on on time. Here it is, the same position the last night of this year. And you still have no fruit. Well, who's to blame? Because some people will say, well, I don't like the preacher. You don't have to like me. I might not like you. Well, God, it's the members. Well, God, it's this and that. No, no. Who, who's to blame? You are responsible for your own growth. Let, 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 me, let, me, let, me, let me put it where you can reach it. Because if you, if you don't understand this, you, you can't catch it. This fig tree had an advantage of location. It was in a good atmosphere and a healthy environment. How you know, preachers, right in the text? Because the tree was planted in a vineyard. Being in a vineyard meant that the tree was protected. You are aware that those of us who have given our life to Jesus Christ enjoy the protection of God. You have no excuse for not bearing fruit because you have been 
protected. Somebody type in right there, I'm, I'm protected. I'm, I'm protected. How many of you know the only reason you made it out of 2020 alive is because you've been protected? Oh, Leron, can I call the roll? The pandemic didn't paralyze us. The foods we ate didn't poison us. The homes we live in didn't cave in on us. Tornadoes that touched down around us didn't touch us. Floods didn't overwhelm us. Drive-bys went past us. Dementia couldn't overtake us. Cancer couldn't kill us. Microbes didn't destroy us. Flaky friends didn't discourage us. We being protected. But that's not all. There's another advantage. The second advantage that comes to mind is that the tree not only was protected, it was planted. It was not a product of chance or happenstance or coincidence. It was deliberately placed there by the owner. Oh, I'm a, I'm, y'all going to make me shout by myself. It was never meant to be a shrub. It was never meant to be a weed. It was never meant to be a bush. No, it was meant to be a fig tree because it was planted and placed by the owner. Oh God, when, when was the last time you took a few moments to celebrate the fact that you've been planted and placed where you are for a specific reason and purpose? Oh, when you know that you know that you've been planted and placed, you can endure sunshine and rain. You can endure heartache and pain. You can endure laughter and tears. You can endure success and failure. You can endure calm and crisis. You can endure peace of mind and vexation of the spirit because God has planted and placed you right where you are. When you recognize that you're protected, planted, and placed, you can declare no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Can I go a little bit deeper? The owner made a reasonable request, gave a redundant report. Finally, there was a regretful recommendation. Uh, At the risk of ruining your new year, God does get tired of you playing with him. Go on and encourage your neighbor. Look over at him and tell him, don't play with God. Don't, don't play with God. It, it, it's right here in the text. Uh, the owner looks at the lack of production. Dean Thompson, and then he says, go on and cut it down. Ooh, that's, that's harsh. Says Teresa, that's the kind of image of God that we don't like to talk about in the church. We don't want to hear about God saying, cut it down. When I looked at this phrase in my Greek New Testament, it does not say cut it down, but rather it says cut it out. And I I thought I just want to tell somebody tonight, you need to cut it out. Because God has called you to be cultured and not crude, gentle and not rude, a prince, not a prodigal, a king, not a clown, an asset, not a liability a helper, not a hindrance. And I thought I'd go on and tell somebody tonight before God cuts you down, you better cut it out. Uh, Now, now there's always one or two in the bunch who who want to be skeptical, and I hear you saying, because your thoughts have become audible in my mind, well, Pastor, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. That's not entirely true. When horse breeders need to make stubborn horses drink, some water they make them lick a salt block in other words they would give them something bitter in order to get them what they need is that what God has to do to you does God have to make you lick a salt block does it take something bitter to make you better Will it take something sour to finally make you recognize God's power? What are you going to do? What are you going to say? What ministries are you going to get involved in that could make God give you another year? Look at the images of the text. The vine dresser, Jesus, addresses the owner, God, in defense of the fig tree. You and me, he says, leave it alone. Spare it. Defer 
the option. Any of us who have student loans know what deferred means. It means before I assess the penalty, let me see if you're going to make good on your promises. Jesus says, let me dig around it and fertilize it. Just allow me to work on it for one more year. But notice the text. Notice the text. I'm out of here. He, he, he digs around it, but he never touches it. He, 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 he digs around it, but he never touches it. But every time God wanted to move somebody from barrenness to fruitfulness, he always touched it. Abraham's wife, Sarah, in Genesis 1130, he touched it. Isaac's wife, Rebecca, in Genesis 25, 21, he touched it. Jacob's wife, Rachel, in Genesis 29, 31, he touched it. But in our text tonight, why did God dig around it and not touch it? Because you already have the potential to produce. How, how is he going to get it to produce? He says, let me dig around it and fertilize it. See, some of the stuff that you're trying to get off of you is really the stuff that God is using to grow you. The stuff that doesn't smell good in your life, the stuff that doesn't look good in your life, the stuff that doesn't feel good in your life, God is saying, I'm going to dig around it and I'm going to let you work on you by fertilizing your life. And the more hell you go through, the stronger you're going to come out. Is there anybody here that can help me testify that 2021 is my year to produce? Usually when... When, when Jesus talks in parables, he makes it clear the ending. But Brother Holbrook, what I love about this parable is it is open-ended. In other words, you really don't know what the ending is because you can make your own conclusion to your own chapter. Oh, God. 2021 is a blank page. And God is saying you can write your next chapter and decide how it's going to end. Can I go a little bit further? Uh, I've always admired the Reverend Dr. I. I. V. Hilliard of Houston, Texas. In one of his lectures, Dr. Hilliard spoke of a painting that I remember studying in humanities class back in the 90s. In Dr. Hilliard's powerful description of the picture, he spoke of it being a study in contradictions. It was a contradiction because the title and the details on the canvas seem to be in direct opposition to one another. The painting's title is Hope by G.F. Watts. If you've seen it, you know it shows a woman sitting on top of our world playing a harp. What more enviable position could one ever hope to achieve than sitting on top of the world with everybody dancing to your music. But when you look at it a little bit closer, the illusion of power gives way to the reality of pain. Because the world on which this woman sits is torn by war, destroyed by hate, decimated by despair, and uh, filled with distrust. The world on which she sits appears to be on the brink of collapse and destruction. Famine ravages millions of inhabitants in one hemisphere, while feasting and gluttony are enjoyed by inhabitants of another hemisphere. This world on which she sits is a ticking time bomb with overwhelming anger, hatred between races, and resentment. Our world clearly today cares more about producing bombs and bullets for enemies than it does for producing bread and butter for the hungry. This world is still more consumed and concerned with the color of a man's skin than it is with the content of a man's character. This world, talk to me tonight, is still more impressed by the shape of your body than it is by the shape of your mind. That that's the world on which this woman is sitting. You and I think of being on top of the world as being in heaven. But when you peel back the leaves, oh God, to look for some fruit, you discover this woman is actually living in a private living hell. 
She's wearing rags, her tattered clothes look as if she's come through Hiroshima or Nagasaki. Her head is bandaged and blood is seeping through the wound. Scars and cuts are visible on her face, her arms and her legs. And a closer look reveals all the harp strings but one has been broken or ripped out. Y'all not going to help me tonight. Even, even the instrument has been damaged by what this woman has been through. And she's the classic example of quiet despair. Yet the artist dares to entitle this painting hope. The illusion of power sitting on top of the world gives way to the reality of pain. If we tell the truth tonight, isn't it that way with a whole lot of us? We give the illusion of being in an enviable position of bearing fruit, sitting on top of the world. But if we just look a little closer, our lives reveal the fruitless reality of pain that's too deep for the tongue to tell. For the woman in the painting, what looks like being in heaven is actually an existence in a quiet hell. I've been pastoring now for over 20 years, and I've seen married couples where the husband hates the wife. The wife can't stand the husband, but they're more concerned about how things are going to look at the church than how it is when they get home in reality. Y'all ought to help me tonight. I've seen college students who give the illusion of being on top of the world with designer clothes, carefree sex, all the trappings of having it all together on the outside, but on the inside they're empty, shallow, lonely, and afraid. Many times what looks good on the outside is really just an illusion of sitting on top of the world, but with a closer look, it's actually a quiet hell. And Dr. Hilliard said he wanted to fight and quarrel with the artist for having the unmitigated gall to name that painting hope when all he could see in the picture was hell and quiet desperation. Oh, but then, Dr. Hilliard said he noticed that he had only been looking at the horizontal dimension with, what the, with the world on which she sat, but he had failed to take consideration of her vertical relationships. He not looked above her head, and when he looked above her head, he found some small notes of music dancing joyfully and playfully toward heaven. Then Dr. Hilliard began to understand why the artist titled the painting Hope, in spite of being on top of a world torn by war, on top of a world destroyed by hate, on top of a world where famine and greed are uneasy bent partners, in spite of being on top of a world where racism and apathy feed the fires of hatred, where elected officials would rather threaten democracy than send a crazy tyrant packing, in spite of being on top of a ticking bomb time bomb with her clothes in rags and her body scarred she had the unmitigated gall and the audacity to make music and praise God oh that's a word for somebody tonight whatever your private hell may be there may not be any visible sign of a change coming but that's just the horizontal level. Keep the vertical level intact. Take that one string you have left and go on and praise God with reckless abandon. You may be like the African slave and be able to sing over my head I hear music in the air. Over my head I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. If this woman sitting on top of the world kept on praising God because she knew that the vertical dimension balances out what's going on in the horizontal dimension. And that is what the hope above us will do for you. While the devil's trying to kill, steal, and destroy. I hear the Apostle Paul saying, you have troubles, glory in your trouble. We glory in tribulation. That's the horizontal dimension. We glory in tribulation because tribulation works patience. Patience works experience. Experience works hope. That's the vertical dimension. And hope makes us not ashamed. Uh, I feel like I may have held you too long, but there's a true life illustration that demonstrates the principles portrayed in this painting. The old folks 
seasoned saints. Used to sing a song that I've not been able to find in any of the published hymnals. It's an old song out of the black religious tradition called Thank You, Jesus. Very, very simple song. Some of you heard it. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but, but songs like that is what got us over. Songs like that is what got us through. And our foreparents always sang uh, songs like that at the strangest times. When money got low, times got tough, a bill collectors would call. They would start singing those songs. And as a little spoiled brat, I didn't understand it as a child. Because it seemed to me that they were thanking God that they didn't have any money. Or thanking God that they had to cut back. Or thanking God that funds were low and debts were high. But Clinetta, I was only looking at the horizontal level. I didn't understand, nor could I see back then, the vertical hookup that our parents had. I did not know nor understand that they were thanking him in advance for what they dared to hope he would do in their situation. That's why they prayed. That's why they hoped. That's why they kept on praying with no visible sign of change on the horizon. And I don't know how y'all feel, but I thank God tonight. I had a praying mother and a praying father. Because now some 40 years later, when I look at what God has done in my life, I thank God tonight that he gave me another chance. <clears throat> That's why I say to you, hope is what saves us. Keep on praying. Because God does hear. And he still answers prayer. Keep on hoping. Keep on leaning. Keep on praising. Keep on trusting. I will trust in the Lord. Is there anybody here thankful for the hedge of protection around us? The fact that the hand of God has planted and placed us and the hope that we have above us. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ. Yes, sir, the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. I want to say to you tonight, without a hoop, without a holler, without a tune, that you ought to put the word on it. Whatever you're going through, go on and look over at somebody and tell your neighbor, whatever you're going through, put the word on it. I'm the head and not the tail. Put the word on it. I'm more than a conqueror. Put the word on it. If God be for us, who can stand against us, put the word on it. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. No weapon formed against me shall prosper put the word on it I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth put the word on it by his stripes I am healed Put the word on it. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. They'll run and not get weary. Walk and not faint. Put the word on it. Weeping may endure for a night. Hey, but joy. It's coming in the morning. Is there anybody here tonight? Know that God will mold you, make you, shape you. Lift up your bow down head, ease your troubled mind. How many times have you come to church? with a bowed down head and a heavy heart and feeling bad, but being in the presence of God gave you enough strength and power to run on just a little while longer. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I made up in my mind. I'm going to trust God through the storm. I'm going to trust him through the rain. I'm going to trust him in the valley. I'm going to trust him in the, in the bottom of the hill. I'm going to trust him. Can't nobody, nobody. do me. Woo. Like Jesus. <clears throat> Can't nobody do me like the Lord. I submit to you tonight that the word of God is true that your latter days are going to be better than your former days. And I don't care what the enemy is trying to convince you of on tonight. Whatever God has for you it is for you and if he declared it he will bring it to pass if you receive that on the night come on and put your hands together open up your mouth 
Give God some praise. To be or not to be. We're going to take up this offering in just a moment. But right before I give you this invitation, I, I, want, to, I want to challenge you tonight. This is for every member of the Grace Emanuel Baptist Church family. And this is really heavy on my heart. This is in my spirit. <clears throat> I literally believe that the Lord has placed it upon me for a reason. It is so very easy to get so caught up in how we see things that we miss out on what God is trying to do. Uh, and let, let, me, let me bless you. Uh, we're, we're learning one another. Right? You got to learn me. I've got to learn you. But, but here's what I will tell you. Whatever God has gifted you to do, I believe that he's placed you and planted you at Grace Emmanuel for a reason. Yes. But I don't learn what your gifts and talents are by osmosis. And so I'm going to challenge you tonight. If you feel that the Lord has put something in your spirit and in your heart, that you want to use your gifts and talents here at the church, call the office, 810-743-3900. We will set up an appointment with me. I'm going to sit down on Zoom, not in person, on Zoom. Uh, and we're going to talk and we're going to pray because my, my desire is that every member of Grace Emmanuel will be actively engaged in ministry. Amen. 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 So look at somebody and tell them, that means you, that means you. I, I thank God for these musicians and, and the praise team and those in the choir, the ushers, but, but everybody doesn't have that gift. Some of you out there have the gift of administration. Some of you have the gift of exhortation. Some of you ha have, have so many uh, other gifts that God wants to use. This is your opportunity. Can you imagine what we can do if we have 100% participation from every single member of Grace Emmanuel. I wasn't going to do this tonight, but I, I feel it. Our theme for 2021 is I'm all in. I'm all in in my faith, with my family, and with my finances. And I just believe that God is going to do something powerful and awesome with us individually and collectively. But it's your responsibility to bear that fruit. Amen. Amen. At, at this time, we want to extend this invitation. If you're watching us, my sincere prayer tonight is that something has been said or something has been done to enrich your walk with God. As the praise team comes to give us an invitational number, if you're here and you don't know Jesus and the pardon of your sin or you don't have a church home, we invite you to unite with us. You can text the word JOIN to the number that will be on the screen and we will be glad to get in touch with you and welcome you to your family or your new family. The doors of the church are open. Will you come tonight? New Year's Eve is a great time to get right with God. Will you come? He's calling you. He's calling you. Yes,
say amen. amen. Come on, say amen again. Amen. We thank God for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, and what our souls have experienced. It is now time that we worship God in the spirit of giving. Pro Proverbs, the third chapter, verses 9 and 10, declares, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. God teaches it, I'll do it, tithe. Go on and give as the Lord has purposed in your heart to give for this first offering of the year. And we thank God that he has blessed us with something to put in our hands. Let's go to the Lord in prayer even now. Father, we come and we thank you for this day. We thank you for the word that you have brought forth. We pray that it fell on good ground. God, now we pray that you will bless these gifts, this offering, for the purpose in which they were taken up, and that is to build your kingdom here on earth. God, we pray now that you will do what only you can do, that you will bless it and stretch it. God, uh, allow the windows of heaven to open and you pour out so much blessing upon us that we won't have room enough to receive it so that we will share it with someone else. God, I pray not only for these gifts, but I ask a special blessing for the giver. Not only for the givers, God, but those who had a desire to give but did not have the means to give, that you will bless them that this time in the next point of your service they will have something in their hand from you that they can give back to you. We love you. We honor you now. And God, we thank you for allowing us to see this another year. Pray that you will continue to lead us, guide us, and direct us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Every heart set together. Amen. 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 God bless you. Happy New Year. <laughs>